This section is about solving linear and compound inequalities. We're going to start with the linear inequalities. We're going to solve each one. We're going to graph the solution set, and then we're going to write the solution set in interval notation. We have five examples to start, and then there's a few more. So first, we have 5x is greater than or equal to negative 65. To get x by itself, we will divide both sides by 5. I divided both sides by a positive, so it maintains the symbol that is there. So we would write this as x is greater than or equal to negative 13. Uh, on a number line, we would graph our solution set. So we need to make sure that somewhere on the number line that we draw, we include negative 13. Maybe I start here at negative 15. Just because I'm running out of space, I'm going to skip negative 14, negative 13, skip negative 12, negative 11. Then over negative 13, this is the start to the solutions. I put a closed circle. I use a closed circle to represent that negative 13 is itself a solution. So it's uh, greater than or equal to. That's the or equal to is now taken care of. Now, where are the numbers bigger than negative 13? They're bigger to the right. So I'm going to draw an arrow going to the right to represent all the numbers that are bigger than negative 13. In interval notation, the interval notation starts at negative 13 and negative 13 is included. So I would use a bracket, negative 13. There's no biggest number that's bigger than negative 13. So we're going to put to infinity. And with infinity, we always use a parenthesis. So this would be the three different representations of uh, x is greater than or equal to negative 13. In letter B, we do see a fraction. And we did talk about a uh, strategy for clearing out fractions. Um, the good news is that if you apply that strategy, you actually will basically solve the entire problem anyway. Um, the alternative to uh, getting rid of all of the fractions first is to just do the algebra here, since it is just one step. It might make more sense. If we have a fraction being multiplied to the, the variable we're trying to isolate, there's a few things you can do, but the most basic one is the way you can clear out a fraction that's being multiplied to a variable is you multiply by its reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 3rd is 3 over 1, which is the same thing as 3. So I can multiply both sides by 3. And 3 times 1 3rd is 1, and 1 times y is y. We get y is less than negative 12. We didn't have to worry about switching the sign because we multiplied both sides by something positive. Now y is by itself, so we can graph. We, that means we're at our solution. So we can graph it on our number line. We just need to make sure that negative 12 is somewhere here. So we're going to do negative 14, negative 12, negative 10. Uh, negative 12 is not part of the solution set. So the way we indicate that is with an open circle. I do an open circle over negative 12. And then we're, it's less than. The numbers that are less than negative 12 are to the left. That would be the graph for y is less than negative 12. Now interval notation. So interval notation, there is no smallest number smaller than negative 12. So we're going to say that they go from negative infinity up to negative 12. Negative 12 is not included, so we'll use a parenthesis. And these would be the three representations for y is less than negative 12. Woo. And this one, letter C, negative 9a, is less than or equal to 27. We're going to divide both sides by negative 9. And now little bells and whistles should be going off in your brain because we just divided by a negative. And when we divide both sides by a negative, we flip the inequality sim symbol. Remember, what was negative is now positive. What was positive is now negative. Everything is switched. So we're going to say a is greater than or equal to 27 divided by negative uh, 9 is negative 3. Now we have the variable by itself. So that's the algebraic representation. Uh, on a number line, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Uh, we're going to put a closed circle over negative 3 to indicate that negative 3 is in fact part of the solution set. So that's the or equal to is now covered. Now, where are the numbers bigger than negative 3? That would be to the right. So we would draw an arrow to the right. That's saying uh, these are the numbers bigger than negative 3. In interval notation, we start at negative 3 and we include it. So we use a bracket, negative 3. And there is no biggest point, so we say it's going to go towards infinity. And those would be the three representations for letter C. Letter D, again, there is just that one fraction that we have to uh, take care of in order to isolate M. So you can 
get rid of the, the denominator if you want to. If you want to multiply everything by five, you can do that. But because this is a one step problem, we generally don't do that here. But it's totally fine if that's what you want to do. Uh, because we just have this fraction being multiplied to our variable, the way we can clear the fraction out is we multiply by its reciprocal. The reciprocal of negative two over five is negative five over two. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative five over two. And again, there should be little alarms and bells and whistles going off in your brain because we just multiplied by a negative. Anytime we multiply both sides by a negative, the inequality symbol gets flipped around. These will cancel and we end up with m is, we're gonna put negative six over one. We're gonna simplify here. Negative times negative is positive and three times five is 15. That's the solution. Now for the graph. On the graph, we just need to make, on our number line, we just need to make sure that 15 is somewhere on the number lines. 13, 14, 15, 16. It will be an open circle over 15, just indicating 15 is not part of the solution set. Uh, we are looking for the numbers that are smaller than 15. That would be to the left. And an in interval notation, since there is no smallest number, it would start at negative infinity and go up to 15 where we do not include 15. Last but not least, letter E, well, for this, for this go round, uh, we need to get X by itself. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add seven to both sides. Luckily with addition and subtraction, we don't have any weird rules like we do with that multiplication and division. You're allowed to add and subtract and it will never change the inequality symbol. We get negative two X is less than or equal to 10. Divide both sides by negative two. Yes, the bells and whistles should be going off right now because we just divided both sides by something negative. That's gonna turn that inequality around, make it greater than or equal to, and 10 divided by negative two is negative five. So this is the algebraic solution on a number line. We need to make sure that our number line somehow includes negative five. So let's do negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two. Um, negative five is part of the solution set, so we will do a closed circle. And the numbers that are bigger than negative five are to the right. In interval notation, we include negative five, and it goes up to infinity. We're gonna continue solving linear inequalities. Uh, here we have negative 50 is greater than or equal to 30 minus 20z. This brings up a really good point here. Um, so we see the variable is on the right hand side, which is generally a problem. Generally, I've mentioned before, students feel more comfortable with the variable on the left hand side. And there are little shortcuts and tricks that we can use when the variable is on the left hand side. But inequalities are not commutative the way equalities are. Equations, you can just switch it around. X equals four is the same thing as four equals X. That's not true with inequalities. So if you wanna get the variable on the left-hand side, you actually have to switch the inequality symbol too. So if I'm gonna rewrite this, we're gonna keep this exactly as we see it. So it's gonna read 30 minus 20z, but this gets flipped around is less than or equal to negative 50. So it's opening up towards the negative 50 here. When I rewrite it, it should still be opening up towards the negative 50. Now I have the variable on the left-hand side. I feel better about it. Let's solve for z. First, we'll take away 30 from both sides. Remember with addition and subtraction, we don't have to worry about changing signs. It'll be negative 20z is less than or equal to negative 50 and negative 30 is negative 80. Now to get z by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides by negative 20. Now little alarms, bells, whistles, the whole work should be going off in your head because I just divided both sides by a negative. Uh, these will cancel, we get z, flip the inequality symbol around is greater than or equal to Negative divided by negative will be positive four. So our solution set is z is greater than or equal to positive four. On a number line, we'll draw it up here. We have four, so we'll do three, four, five, six. Four is included in the solution set, so we'll do a closed circle over four to indicate, yep, four is a solution as well. Uh, the numbers are bigger to four to the right of four, so we'll draw our arrow to the right. In interval notation, we would do a bracket four, and then there's no biggest number, so it'll go up to infinity. So these are the three representations for z is greater than or equal to four. Letter G, we have seven times two x minus one plus 12 is greater than or equal to 16 x minus five. First, we're gonna clean up the left-hand side. Let's distribute the seven. That would be 14 x 
minus 7 plus 12 is greater than or equal to 16x minus 5. I believe there are like terms on the left. We have negative 7 and positive 12, so that's 14x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 16x minus 5. From here, we want to probably put the variables on the left-hand side, and then we'll move the constants to the right-hand side. So I'm going to subtract 16x from both sides. That way, we won't have any variables left on the right-hand side. And I'll subtract 5 from both sides, so that way we won't have any constants left on the left-hand side. So this gives us negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 5, and negative 5 is negative 10. I'm going to come over here. Negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 10. We'll divide both sides by negative 2. I divide it by a negative. I flip the inequality symbol when I write the next line. x is less than or equal to negative 10 divided by negative 2 is positive 5. On a number line, we just need to make sure we include 5 somewhere. So we'll do 3, 4, 5, 6. Over 5 is a closed circle to indicate that 5 is itself a solution. It is smaller than or equal to itself. And then numbers that are smaller than 5 are to the left of 5. So we go over here. In interval notation, there is no least number smaller than 5. So we would say negative infinity to 5. And we close off 5 with a bracket since it is part of the solution set. So these are, where are they? 1, 2, 3, the three different ways to express x is less than or equal to 5. Last from this section, we have this problem h. 4 times 3x minus 5 plus 5 is less than or equal to 16x plus 1. Uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to distribute. So that would give us 12x minus 20 plus 5 is less than or equal to 16x plus 1. On the left-hand side, we do have like terms negative 20 and positive 5. If we combine those, we end up with negative 15. So we have 12x minus 15 is less than or equal to 16x plus 1. I want to get the variable terms to the left-hand side and the constant terms to the right-hand side. So I'll add 15 to both sides. And I will also subtract 16 from both sides. 16x, I'm sorry. Subtract 16x from both sides. Now I'm going to combine the like terms. 12x minus 16x is negative 4x. Those cancel. We have is less than or equal to. Those cancel 16. Divide both sides by negative 4. Ding, 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 ding. Switch the inequality symbol around. 16 divided by negative 4 is negative 4. So we end up with x is greater than or equal to negative 4. On a number line, just want to make sure that we include negative 4, so negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3. Negative 4 is part of the solution set, so we'll use a closed circle. x is greater than, numbers bigger than, negative 4 are to the right of negative 4. And in interval notation, it starts at negative 4 and includes negative 4, so I use the bracket to indicate it's including, to infinity, and we always use a parenthesis for infinity.